Scott Pendlebury Yay! with us this morning. Oh, lovely to see you, Scott. Thanks for your time, mate. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me in. Collingwood's best basketballer. <laughs> oh, second best. Uh, who's the best? Tom Wilson. Is he? Wow. He, was a, he went to college, played professionally in Serbia. Yeah, right. Um, I don't, he, he'll probably be listening, so he'll enjoy this. But I think at one stage, he was the second highest rated junior in the world. Is wow. that a fact? Yeah. So he um, got a bit unlucky with some injuries and stuff like that. So I say I'm second, which mm. to Jack Madgen and Brody Grundy, stiff. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> stiff. Because Jack Madgen played a bit of college. Yeah, he played some college and... I think he got seven seconds in the NBL as well. So, um, yeah, subbed in, yeah, subbed then out. To footy. <laughs> um, mate, we were talking to Nick Rewald on Friday and a really interesting chat, uh, which I'd love to get your uh, views on, is Nick was saying that young blokes never really know. We were talking about consistency around teams like North. And young blokes never really know how much they've got left in the tank. Um, fitness-wise and mentally, because it's a long game. It's like a two-hour yeah. game, and they can't concentrate for that long, and physically they feel like they're spent, but they never really are. You yeah. must see that yeah. in young blokes all the time. Yeah, well, you see it with everyone. Um, mm. I was reading Chris Fagan this morning talking about um, Charlie Cameron from Brisbane saying he's improved the ability now as a player, and he's been around a while now, Charlie, mm. that if it's not been his day, he'll get you in the second half or late yeah. in the third quarter, the start of the fourth, so... Um, yeah, well, I, I think what Nick's saying there is that, it's, you know, how many guys start a game well and they're like, oh, they're on fire in the first quarter and they had this amazing game. But if they don't have that amazing first quarter, they, their game doesn't sort of flow from there. So yeah. yeah, I'm sure Nick would have gone through and a lot of guys that have played a lot of footy, it's most week, it's most weeks, it's a grind. You've got mm. to grind down your direct opponent or whoever you're playing on to get to that point where you can start to break the game open in the third or the fourth quarter. And um, yeah, there's certainly some like midfielders when you first start getting tagged and things like that, you learn very quickly how hard you think you're working versus how hard you've got to work. So, um, yeah. And that's often when you see good players really come through is that they consistently work hard every week, regardless of the scoreboard or hoping to get lucky and, and things like that. So yeah, it's a tough game physically and mentally, and there's so many levels to it. Well, the mental aspect of it, because I suppose you can flog yourself through pre-season and be spewing and all of that sort of stuff. But if mentally you can't find a technique where if things start badly and go pear-shaped to get yourself back into the game, well, then everyone's carrying you. Yeah. Well, imagine if you've got five or six guys who thought they were going to get 10 touches in the first quarter and they all get three. So then yeah. they all just go, oh, that's the white flag for me today at quarter time. I <laughs> yeah. didn't really get the start I needed to, but yeah. Yeah, I think that's the ability of sides. It's just, And a lot of coaches talk about it, players talk about it now, is it's more than just um, the ball in your hands. I think if you've had 30 possessions, you might have had the ball in your hands for two and a half minutes for the game, mm. maximum. Mm. But there's a whole, what's that, 117 more minutes left in the game. So mm. guys talk about role. So if you, you know, you're not doing the right, or you're not getting a lot of the ball, is like, can you just like keep playing your role? Because it will eventually click for you and the system needs you to do that. So don't turn up your toes, so to speak. If you're not, it's not going your way early, just keep working through it. And, mm. You know, the more team things you do, usually it comes back to pay you pay you back. Mm, mm. Systems. It's a whole new thing, isn't it? Because there must have been a time in your football life as a junior where you just ran around kicking the footy, but those yeah. days are well over. I, yeah, I sound old saying this, but I tell the guys now that when I first started, rotations weren't really a big thing. So yeah. if you got named mm. on the bench, you were on the bench for at least a quarter and a half. Yeah, yeah. They just can't believe it. None it of this kicking like a goal. Fossil. Yeah, yeah. None, yeah, 120 <laughs> rotations. And, you know, I've played a game, I think, where we had more rotations than minutes. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, yeah, the, the, all the systems and the, the way the game's evolved and, and things like that's really cool to be a part of. How far do you run it in a game? Uh, probably around the 13 and a half to 14 and a half K. So, mm. um, and then you've got your guys that run on the wings, like steel side bottom. I know Ed, Ed Langdon from Melbourne, you know, they're really high. They don't really come off and incredible runners. So I'm not one of those. So I no, but it's a get, lot, isn't position. it? Yeah. It's a. Um, I think it was Finn McGuinness went to Ed Langdon on the weekend. It was like a track meet, just watching him run <laughs> on the outside. And that's where, um, you know, I think Sam Mitchell said about how well um, Finn McGuinness played in that role. But you watch Ed Langdon, his game never really changed. I know he didn't have the impact he usually does, but he's still in the right spot all the time. He's just got like a shadow with him. But mm -hmm. He's still running that same pattern. And that's that maturity. I think he's 26 now, Ed. and play some incredible football, but he didn't stop working. Yeah. Even though the game wasn't going his way, he just kept working himself as hard as he could. Yeah, good footy talk this yeah, isn't it? This is good <laughs> footy yes. talk. Marty Scott Pendlebury with us this morning. I know. It's a treat. Um, well done on the weekend, by the way. Thank you. Rock solid. Up and down. 
Yeah, it was a couldn't bit really a, shake them off. No. But then obviously did. Yeah, well, they kicked the first two, then I think we kicked the next seven, and uh-huh. it sort of just ebbed and flowed a little bit. And as our coach said yesterday, we had quite a few guys go down during the week and families and. Because you had a bit of gastro. Yeah, didn't gastro you? sort of went through the club. Everyone gets so nervous these days. As soon as someone's sick, it's That's like, oh, they've got COVID. Good. Yeah. They've got COVID. Yeah, we're um, going to get locked down. So we sort of thought, you know, how many guys are going to be missing? And then it was like gastro. And then, yeah, we had a few guys who'd, you know, like sort of like Geordie, for example, he rocked up the day before the game, first time we'd seen him for the week. And he said he felt Jeez. okay. But then mm. you got to go play for 120 minutes. And as we spoke about before, how hard it is to do. So I thought our guys showed great resilience yesterday to just, um, find a way to get a result when we had, you know, quite a few guys sick and, um, you know, it was quite funny. Our, our coach made a little bit of a gag about it. Yeah. It's like, don't tell me you can't tackle sort of thing if you've got a runny nose today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair point. Fair, fair point. point. <laughs> well, I couldn't tackle today. My nose was a bit runny. <laughs> um, Ginevan, Ginevan, uh, goal of the year. Yeah, that was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I was sort of a fair way away from when it happened, but, um, yeah, really good goal. Um, work in the boundary oh, sold some candy a couple sold of times sold some candy actually thought he might have run too far I don't oh. want to take anything away from yeah. it but gee there was some weak defence going on around that goal of the year and <laughs> yeah. I mean I don't want to steal any of Jack's thunder yeah. it's so funny though because close to the goal everyone's so desperate to stop you kicking it mm. so you can see that because I think someone's like you know two missed tackles but they actually like two missed smothers they both yeah. tried to smother the ball they didn't even try and tackle him because you just He's so paranoid because if you tackle it, obviously you can still kick it. Mm. It's mm. like try and smother, try and smother. But yeah, he's very, as I've said for a while with Guinea, he's, he's such a clever guy who works on his craft really hard. So I was, I'm not surprised by what I see. And um, I think everyone else is just starting to see it now. Did you see Corns bleached his hair? Did you see yeah. that through the week? <laughs> oh, I seen it after the game. It was on TV, I think, when we got back to the club, but I couldn't hear it because the. Um, the audio was muted, but mm. it's um, probably the best way to hear corns. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> um, interesting tweet from you through the week, and I think we foffed about this at some we point. Did. Focus on football at some point through the week uh, with the PCL injuries from the ruck. Is it time to look at the centre bounce and changing it? Yeah, well, I just I think like Nick Nat has done his PCL, yeah. um, but even this goes back to 2008. Josh Fraser. For obviously at the time playing for Collingwood, did his PCL in a state game, mm. um, and it's just the AFL is trying to look at all these ways to avoid injuries, and I feel like this is one where it's only going to happen in this ruck contest, like that knee on knee, and it could be avoidable. Mm. So what's the way to to look at it? And um, I'm not sure of the answer, but um, is yeah, it just the, the bounce <laughs> that's the issue for you? I don't think it's the bounce. I think it's the fact that guys can square each other up, so yeah. mm. you know, sort of like direct north south each other, run and jump, whereas. If that's a marking contest and I'm under the ball and you run, it's front on contact. Yeah. So it's almost like we're letting front on contact happen in a ruck contest, yeah. but nowhere else in the ground. And I don't know the answer, um, whether it's like a ruck wedge or something where you can't north-south guys. So you'd be like the throw-in. <laughs> They're both yeah, approaching sort of, the ball from the same um, angle. Some ruckmen do it already where they cross the line and you turn it into like a ball up. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we want to see guys just standing there right across the line and taking away jumps. But yeah, I also don't want to see, you know six, seven PCL injuries a year from ruck contests that are avoidable. And it looks oh. painful. Oh, and you can, you can see guys um, like Darcy, Draper, when they do it, they're, on, they're protecting themselves, but you sort of, everyone's looking at each other's knees. Like, I've got to get mm. my knee above your knee because mm. I don't want to be the one who gets the injury. And, mm. um, you know, and then you hear sort of both sides. It's like, oh, it's the last piece of the game where the ruckman can go and, you know, stick your knee yeah, in his yeah. chest before the... So come on. Yeah, it's you're like, right. It needs yeah, to be great, looked at great if he sticks his knee in his chest, but if they hit knee on knee, you lose a Brody Grundy for 12, knee, 12 weeks, Nick mm. Nat 12 weeks, all these guys. It's mm. just, I, I think it's avoidable and it's just, I don't know how we, how we get there. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, it's definitely something we should look at. Do you Did, think, sorry, mate, do you no, think the right, center bounce is like important to the fabric of the game? No, be, just throw it up. Yeah, just right. throw it up. Throw it, just throw it up. Like we had a few yesterday. Um, I think we had three or four that just go. As you see, I think there's a Bulldogs game. You lose time off the clock. Yeah. yeah. All these other little things. Like, just throw it. I don't think you ever walk away from the game. If the umpire does it perfect all day, yeah. you don't leave the game and go, Good the bouncing. umpire's nailed it Good today. Bouncing. Bouncing today. Or you just think, you just throw it up, let's go. Like, let the game go. Never have to worry about getting a call back. Mm. Um, what about the tradition that you lose when you take the bounce out? Well, I'm not, not worried about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, I, think I know the umpires. Tra- yeah, tradition. The umpires complain about it constantly. Yeah, and I, I didn't realize this until a few weeks ago, but some umpires don't umpire grand finals because they're not really good bouncers. Yeah. Yeah. So Seems like, ridiculous. Yeah. So like they could be the best field umpire in the game, but they're not a great bouncer. So 
Um, it's time to move past. Anything yeah. else catch your eye from the weekend? I know we're running out of time. <laughs> Carlton and North was sensational. I like the Geelong Freo game. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was sort of the game of the round everyone was looking for. And um, Freo Geelong's, in Geelong. Yeah. Geelong started really well. And then Freo, um, their defensive system is just so strong. Yeah, they um, look good, don't they? Found a way to score, dominate the ball. And down there too, it's really hard. So they look like they're the real deal. They really do, don't they? Melbourne Hawthorne, 10 points. Uh, Jeez, Hawthorne are the best starting side in the league, aren't they? The first five <laughs> minutes, you can pretty much lock them in to kick three goals. Yeah. yeah. I did it again on the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Bulldogs, Bombers. Funny old game, wasn't it? Oh, I didn't say it. You I was not saying that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh, but well, then um, Joe Danaher too for Brisbane, yeah. shoulder. So hopefully that's not too bad for him. It looked um, sore, didn't it? The way he was holding it. Yeah, you always get nervous when guys get subbed out and you see them sort of cradling their shoulder or yeah. whatever it is because you just think, Please don't be like the Rico or mm-hmm. popped out or whatever it is. Do you think Brisbane are the second seed <clears throat> behind Melbourne? I think Frio. Mm. There you go. I think Frio are the second seed at the moment. Um, just their brand of footy and, as I said, they can really restrict you and they can create a lot of opportunities, which is what every side's doing and they're doing it. And, um, yeah, they've just got a lot of even contributors. On the weekend, like, no Darcy, Tabana, Fife. Fife yeah. A lot of their sort of A-grade players weren't even there. Yeah. They still found a way to you know, play some really strong football against the side at Geelong. I think they've won a, what is it, like 107 out of their last 113 games there. Jesus. Mm. So uh, a fair fortress. Good footy chat. Good footy chat. Good footy chat, guys. (laughs) Well done, mate. Have a lovely week. Thanks, guys. Scott Penabry will chat to you next week.